have a completed quilt to share with you today. My first free motion quilted quilt. Uh, first though, I'd like to show you something that I recorded a couple of weeks ago when I was in the process of quilting this that explains a lot about where I was at that point, what quilting, what was working for me, what wasn't, and how I was approaching putting everything together. This is the practice quilt that I, or practice piece, that I showed you uh, in a previous video where I just marked off some of these triangles or, and the, the form a diamond shape and then I was practicing my swirls and after a while I decided I had enough practice and I was ready to move to my regular quilt. When I did these, I did them all with a ruler and the ruler foot that is not made for but can fit on my FAF machine. This worked fairly well on this practice piece, but one of the differences between this and the regular quilt are seams, and that's a really important distinction. Because this is my regular uh, free motion quilt that works with the faff, and I've got another one that's an open-toed uh, version of it. But this moves up and down, it bounces as it quilts. And I finally realized what the significance of that is. It keeps it going over uneven surfaces like you get with seams, especially where the seams come together, say, for example, at this point where there's, there's several uh, seams joining together. What would happen with this foot is as I would quilt, when I was out in here I was fine, but when I would get to here it just wouldn't go anywhere because if I moved this up high enough to clear those seams, then I had problems with thread breakage. So because it was just it was just staying in the one place, it wasn't bouncing like this foot does. So what I had to do, I did a little bit with the ruler on some of these, and you can see those are a little bit nicer. So I did these with the ruler foot and I ran into problems here. So then I had to just switch to doing, to using the regular free motion foot for the rest of the uh, quilting. And some of it was better than others. There's some uneven lines. That one may have been done with the rulers. When I get further over into the quilt, all of this was done with the free motion foot. And some of it, as I say, is better than others. This one wasn't too bad. This was probably my nicest one, although ironically I did not have my fabric spread out and penned as flat on this corner, and I think this corner is going to end up being a, a problem for me when I go to put my borders on. I don't think it's going to end up being square because I had some places when I was quilting the background where it really wanted to bunch up. Um, but I didn't have too much of that. For the most part, everything uh, went pretty well once I got over to the free motion quilt. I used a join method that I learned in the class that I was telling you about before. Uh, I'll put it on the screen. I can't remember the name of it right right now. It's from Marty Michelle. Uh, but a join method where you added in, you did part of your quilting and then you added in your batting and did the remainder of the top. And that worked really well for me. I modified her approach a little bit in that she didn't have an approach that did quite what I've done. I went ahead and put the batting on for the entire, or for the backing on for the entire quilt. I just didn't put the batting in or the borders for the entire quilt. So what I'm going to be doing here on the edge is I'm going to be taking my border and I'm going to be sewing that and a layer of batting. I'll trim this batting bit back. And I'll sew a layer of face fabric and a layer of batting in, and I already have the backing here, and just sew that in, fold it over, I'll have to trim away some excess and continue on, and that gives me fewer seams on the back. It did create, though, more bulk at the machine, and I don't think I would do that again, but that was the approach I took for this quilt. On one end of it, I even left the batting in place, so all I have to do is sew the border on. And I definitely wouldn't do that again. It just, with all this rolled up, made it really kind of aggravating at times um, when I was quilting. The thing that went really well about this, though, I think, is, are the swirls. Because I was pleased with how the swirls came out. Now, they're not by any means perfect, and I hope they'll get better, that kind of thing will get better over, the, over time. But I really enjoyed the free motion part of the quilting. And I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed how it came out for the most part. There are places that are better than others. Um, I'll give you some examples. I think I do a better job with swirls where I do just singles. I just 
go into the middle and back out again. It's when I start echoing that I don't get as good a look as I do with just a single swirl. So that's just me and my experience with it and maybe that will get better uh, over time. But uh, that's where I am so far with this quilt. I have now all of the main part of the top quilted and I'm ready to go ahead and add my borders, which are laying back there in the very back. Uh, I'm going ready to start adding those and any additional batting that I need onto this and then I'll be quilting them. As you add things on, of course, it gets bigger and bigger and more and more to keep up with uh, at the machine. So now let's take a look at the quilt. I've finished quilting all of it, all the borders, and I've put the binding on and everything, and I'm really excited about it. I feel like this looks the most like a real quilt <laughs> of anything that I've ever done. Even though I've done bed size quilts, I've always done them just with a walking foot, or I've tied them, or as my grandmother called it, tacked a quilt where you use thread and you, you tack it every uh, few inches and that works. I mean it's very functional but I just really really love how this came out. Now it, as I said in earlier it is far from perfect but I'm very excited about it. I used this blue backing fabric and I did match color match thread on the uh, triangles and on the border um, and then I just used blue thread for the back. I probably the next time would do something where I picked a background backing fabric that was similar to the front so I could use the same thread for everything and not have to worry about what was in the bobbin and also you know, there are places where you can kind of see that, uh, that there's a different thread top and bottom. But for the most part it worked, it worked better than I kind of anticipated it was going to. So let's pull this out here. try to show you some of the areas a little bit closer up, what worked and what didn't. <laughs> the joining method that I used, which was a little different from the class that I had taken, worked better than, than I thought it was going to. It worked fairly well, um, except as I said in the other video, there was, a, there was a fair amount of bulk around on the sides as I was working in the middle, and I probably just wouldn't do it that way. She had a method where you join a completed quilt section or even an incompleted section to the main body of the quilt without having to have all that extra fabric, um, and I think that's probably what I would do uh, the next time. It means a little more seams in the backing, but that doesn't matter, especially when you use a good all-over sort of print. You're not going to see that much anyway. Things that worked well um, in the bind in the border, I just did a variety of stitches. Um, as I came along to each triangle or a group of triangles or pieces here, I just did different things. Like this one was meandering. Then I did some wavy designs. Went back and forth this way. Just did all kinds of different things. And it was a place to play. And I think once, you know, I'd done the middle and realized, you know, this is not going to be quite as good as I would like, but it's okay. I, there's some threads I still have to cut off. Then I can just play and just do lots of different things. And that's what I did. I decided not to quilt these corner pieces, what I kind of consider the keystone. They look sort of like a men's tie. I, I liked those sort of popped up the way they came out without, with the quilting around them and not quilting those. So that's what I uh, did there. Again, there's, there's more threads than I thought. This was the corner where I didn't think things would lay flat, and I was right. Where it all came out was right in here, and you can see where I've kind of had to bunch this up and quilt over that, because, you know, I quilted along here, and I'd, done, I'd actually done a little bit from this end, too, because I think this was the section where I had lavender on each end, and when it got to this point, I just had too much fabric, and it was just easy, at that point, it was just easier just to sort of push it in there and quilt over the top. Maybe not the best way of, most professional way of approaching it, but it's the approach that I took, um, and the getting it done kind of uh, way. The borders, I liked the stitching that I did here, and I, I measured and marked some of this, and then I just started doing it freehand, just going 
cross this way, this way, this way, and I was doing all that with free motion. And then I love this particular quilting on the end. This is probably one of my favorite looping designs. And you can see some of these a lot better on the back side, what I've done. So that'll give you a little bit of an idea of well how my quilt came out. I'll show several photographs um, of it. I really, really enjoyed doing it. It was a lot of fun. Um, I just I'd get up here and I'd start quilting and I didn't want to stop. Um, it is pretty warm in my upstairs bedroom this time of the year, so <laughs> sometimes I was encouraged to wrap up because it just got a little bit too hot up here. But otherwise, um, I really liked the process. I love having this done. And this is probably going to be a throw because I don't have anywhere to hang anything that large and this say it's not if I if I hung it I think I'd be looking at the flaws every time I, I pass by it. But it is something that I'm I'm going to enjoy and continue to quilt. My to can continue to do other quilts. I already have another project started. I'll give you a sneak peek at that and then we'll do that in a separate video. My next project is going to have this fabric for borders and I match that fa that fabric with um, other fabrics to do these squares and I'll show you a few of those. There's a bunch of them here in red and those are going to be um, joined together for the center of the quilt and then I'll have some wide borders on it. But what I'd like to do is to do this in a separate video where I share a little bit about um, my approach to this quilt, how I, how I lay out a design in PowerPoint. PowerPoint is not a, a great, necessarily a great quilt design software, but it's what I use because it's what I have. And um, so, and some of the challenges I had in getting the measurements. It's been a while since I did anything in this more traditional method with the half square triangles and trying to get everything really precise piecing. I just haven't done that in a long time. So, um, so that, there were some challenges in that uh, for, for me in that. But I'll talk about that in another video coming along. Thanks so much for joining me, and um, if you like the quilting videos, I hope that you'll do a thumbs up. And if you have quilting friends, if you want to share them with them, I would really appreciate it. And I'd love to get any feedback that you have to help me become a better quilter. Thanks again.